at me. There we go. Hello, Facebook. Anybody who's tuning in on Facebook, uh, <clears throat> we are starting uh, a weekly Bible study on the book of Job. It's uh, a joint venture between Christ Life, Inc. and River Life Chapel uh, in Youngstown, New York. Um, if you don't have a home church and you're in western New York, we invite you to join us Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m. at 3474 Creek Road in Youngstown, New York. Um, and if you are part of a Bible-believing church, get there. Uh, so we're, stu we're studying the book of Job. Uh, we're just getting started. And so... Um, we already prayed here, Lord, give us ears to hear what your Spirit says, and help us to learn from you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so, uh, you're welcome, if you're in Western New York, to come and join us. We've got uh, a good-sized group here tonight. Um, the only one you'll see is me, because the rest of them won't let me point the camera at them. Uh, so, but that's okay. Uh, we're here for the Word of God. Um, not to look at people. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, Job. Uh, a lot of people are sometimes afraid of the book of Job. Uh, it could be kind of scary what God allows Job to go through. Um, it can be sometimes difficult to understand, if not kind of understood in context. Um, and... Uh, we ask questions. God, why? You know, why Why did Job go through what he went through when you described him the way you describe him? You know, so uh, we're going to we're going to hopefully answer some of those questions through this uh, through this Bible study. Um, and so uh, we're going to do a little overview and then we'll get into it. And then, uh, Lord willing, it, it'll be an interactive Bible study, you know, everyone sharing their thoughts and uh, as we go through the scriptures. Um, but I want to lay a little background to the book of Job. Um, a lot, there's some debate, some debate over different things. Um, one of the things, that, is Job an allegory? Or is he a real person? Uh, some people will say Job was an allegory. Um, and they'll say that because of uh, sometimes repetitive use of sacred numbers. Uh, so numer num not numerology, you know, the Bible has a lot of numbers and there are meanings to many of those numbers. And in Job, some of the numbers are three and seven that are repeated. Uh, and some people say, okay, that's kind of indicative of it's an allegory. Uh, <clears throat> Job had three daughters, he had three friends, seven sons, 7,000 sheep. So there's some repetition there that leads some people to think Job is an allegory. Um, some of the uh, types or forms of speech used in Job tend to lead some people to believe it's an allegory. Uh, and the name Job, by definition, means hated. <laughs> so, I mean, that certainly could fit into an allegory because he certainly probably, during the midst of his trials, felt hated. As a matter of fact, as we go through Job, we're going to see that he wished he was never born. You know, uh, so those are some of the reasons why people think Job might be an allegory. Um, personally, I believe Job was a real person. Uh, and uh, for me, the real defining reason for that is in the Bible, Job is referred to by other people in the Bible as though he were a real person. So, for example, in Ezekiel 14, uh, Job, Noah, and Daniel are referred to together. You know, it says something like, if these three people were here, they'd only save themselves. They wouldn't save anybody else, Job, Daniel, and Noah. So Ezekiel seemed to think Job was a real guy. And better than that, the Holy Spirit 
who prophesied and wrote through Ezekiel, seemed to think Job was a real guy. That's the end of the question for me. Uh, you know, no allegory, real guy. James refers to Job as, and ha talks about having the patience of Job. So in the Bible, there's other references to Job that would indicate he's a real guy. So um, my take is Job is a real guy. Um, also, there's other uh, things that allegories don't take into consideration, like the specificity of the names of the people and the location where Job took place, um, and so on and so forth. Actually, uh, the last one in my notes is uh, some, new, some of the New Testament authors actually quote Job verbatim. Uh, Romans 11.35 and 1 Corinthians 3.19 are a couple of those examples where Job is quoted verbatim. Usually one would not quote from an allegory. It, you know, an allegory is an allegory. It's not intended to build doctrine or support doctrine. So I lean towards um, Job being a real and legitimate person. Uh, we want to look at, before we get started, who wrote the book of Job? Always a good question to find out who the author was. Um, <clears throat> the author is not named in the book of Job itself. He doesn't say, I, Job, wrote this book. Uh, you know, whereas others do, you know, say that. I, Paul, see how I, Paul, sign with my own hand, you know, things like that. Um, so the author is not specifically named in the book. Um, my personal leaning, I believe Job wrote the book of Job. Um, it is debated, but I believe Job wrote the book of Job for a number of reasons. Um, <clears throat> uh, in Job 19.23, Job says, I wish that my words were written in a book. Uh, okay, you know, he lived 100, I think it was 120 years after the turmoil. He certainly had enough time to write a book. Uh, he wished there had been a book. Um, so that's one of the reasons I think Job wrote the book of Job. Um, another reason I think Job wrote the book of Job is, uh, <clears throat> well, let's go over some of the others uh, who people uh, speculate may have written the book of Job. Uh, some, uh, some would say, well, We'll just go down my notes. I don't want to skip around. Some say it's not Job because he would not, he was not in the book aware of the conversation between God and Satan. I don't find that to be a problem because prophets prophesied things that hadn't happened yet that they wouldn't be aware of. So could God not have filled Job in after the fact, after it was all over? I think he could have. Um, and um, so some people speculate that Moses wrote the book of Job. Some speculation is that Moses wrote the book of Job to encourage the children of Israel in their wandering through the wilderness. That makes some sense. Um, and uh, Moses lived for 40 years in Midian, which was next door to Uz, which is where Job was from. Uh, and... Um, and uh, he could have easily have heard, I mean, it could have been a very popular story. Uh, so Moses could have heard that, um, the, the account of Job. And so they say Moses possibly wrote it um, as an encouragement to the people. Uh, <clears throat> some say it was possibly Solomon uh, because he wrote, the, he wrote other wisdom books and some of the content of Job is similar to the content of Ecclesiastes. Um, possibility. Uh, other speculations are Jeremiah and Ezra. Um, I think most likely Job wrote it. And aside from the fact he said, I wish there was a book and had about 120 years after his recovery to write a book, um, some of the other reasons is <clears throat> in the book of Job, there is no mention of Abraham, no mention of Moses or the law. I mean, 
These are major things. If Moses had written the book or Solomon had written the book or Jeremiah had written the book, we'd be a little hard pressed to think there was no mention of the promise of Abraham or the law of Moses. I took a quick look and out of the 39 books of the Old Testament, I think 30 or 33 mention the law. You know, it's possible that the whole book of Job didn't mention any of these things, but it would make a whole lot more sense if it was written before any of those events took place. So that's another reason I tend to lean towards Job having written the book of Job. Uh, he said he wished so, and there's a lot of evidence that to me doesn't make sense why such a godly person, and when we start getting into the chapter one and two, we see how God defines Job and describes Job, uh, how such a man of God would not mention people like Abraham and Moses and the law. Eh, I don't know. Um, but the bottom line is the Holy Spirit wrote it. So I'm not saying it's unimportant to become aware of these kind of things. It is. But it doesn't change the fact it's the Word of God. Um, Question. Yeah. So we talk about there's no mention of the law or Moses or Abraham. But yep. Isn't Job like the oldest book in the Bible? Yeah, we're getting there. I, oh, I, my bad. Yep. My bad. My bad. My Just, bad. No, no, that's okay. Is this, I, I, I want to encourage, and once I get through the introduction, I want to encourage interaction. Um, but the very my next point is the dating of the book of Job. Uh, and as Pastor mentioned, most likely the book of Job was the first book written uh, of the Bible, which makes sense if Job wrote it. Um, and uh, the dating of it uh, would be probably in the most believe it's in the time of the patriarchs because Abraham lived roughly 175 years. Job lived roughly 200 years. So the age of the people is similar. You know, if he had been earlier than that, he would have lived close to a thousand years. If he had been later than that, he would have been 70, 80, you know, decreasing as time progressed. So the age of the patriarchs seems to be um, the time frame when Job was written uh, and when the events took place. Um, and uh, again, meant the lack of reference to any of the great men of God, Abraham. Uh, Moses, the law, things like that. It, to me, it leans that Job was at the earliest contemporary with Abraham, at the latest, and probably a little earlier um, than that. Uh, and when you look at Abraham, you see the nations around him. They, they, Even the people he dwelt amongst recognized him and said, you know, they, they were willing them to give them give Abraham property. No, no, you just take it, just take it. Bury your wife, just take it. You know. So Abraham was well known. Uh, Job most likely would have been probably a little prior to Abraham. Definitely, I would say in the time of the patriarchs. So uh, last thing in preliminary um, in understanding the book of Job. Uh, most books are designed, rightfully so, I think, to be read from the beginning to the end. I think it's a little beneficial to jump to the end and then start to the beginning. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second here. Um, <clears throat> I think there's value in that. Uh, most other books you call that cheating. Uh, <laughs> you know, but... And I'm going to give you the reason, uh, one of the big reasons why. Um, there's a, a couple things that uh, come to mind. Uh, avoid. One of the things is we can, by jumping to the end of this book, we can avoid building doctrines from people God says are wrong. Okay, so uh, Job 42, 7. Um, let me get there. The one, kind of the one 
piece that I'm going to jump ahead to. You're not even going to say spoiler alert? Spoiler alert. All right. <laughs> Job 42.7. We're going to jump kind of to almost the end of the book because this is very important as we go through the book of Job and we start reading some of the commentary from his three friends. It's critical to know that God says, you guys were wrong, not like Job. Uh, so, And I've heard people. I've heard people actually quote from those three guys as if it's sound doctrine. Kind of silly to try and build sound doctrine out of that which God said is wrong. Okay, so when we start reading through, when we get to those guys, I think the approach will be look at and say, well, why is this wrong what he said? Because some of the things they said sound pretty right. So, but let's look at the, this verse, uh, 40, Job 42, verse 7. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. For you have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. Okay? And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and we'll get into that when we get to chapter 42 and, and what's around there, basically. Spoiler alert. God tells him, go have Job pray for you, and then I'll listen to him. So, anyhow... Um, so as we go through, we, I'll definitely be reminding us, hey, we're in Eliphaz now, uh, or Zophar, or the other Bildad, uh, and, you know, God said they're wrong. So now let's see what they said and why they're wrong. Probably might be a way we'll look at that. All right, so into Job chapter 1, <clears throat> and uh, we'll read, I think maybe I'll read the first five verses, or if somebody wants to read the first, so I don't have to do all the talking, read the first five verses, and then um, then we'll make some discussion around that. I'll read. Okay. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. And the seven sons and three daughters, and seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of auction, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. And his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. Okay, so what are some things that we learn about Job from those uh, first five verses? He was wealthy. He was wealthy. Job was definitely wealthy. He says blameless and upright. He was blameless and upright. Uh, the King James uses the word perfect, blameless, complete, uh, you know, mature, that kind of thing. Um, Anything else you pull out of that? He feared God. He feared God. Oh, that's a good one. And he was a family man. He was definitely a family man. Uh, <clears throat> I won't go there yet. Re remind me when we uh, get, to, it'll, it'll probably won't be today, but remind me when we get to uh, Job's wife's counsel. Um, I have a little thought about that. Anyhow, uh, it, it's not Bible, so, but it's just my thought. Uh, okay, so he was a family man. Anything else out of those verses? Well, it seems like uh, he knew that, uh, you know, there were sinners in the world because he said he rose and sanctified them in case they had sinned. Yeah, that was uh, with regards to his family, his right. sons. Uh, he, he, like, probably like any father... He was concerned about his sons. Uh, and 
he knew there was certain times they were partying. Um, uh, some, some, some tend to believe that each one on his day is a reference to their birthdays. Uh, maybe, maybe not, not sure. Um, but Job knew his sons had special gatherings and they feasted. And uh, as young people, uh, Job was definitely concerned. And so the kind of man he was, it says uh, <clears throat> at the end of what we just read, verse 5, Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Job was constantly offering sacrifice, constantly interceding for his sons. Uh, you know, so God describes him as blameless and upright, one that feared God. We're going to talk about that. Uh, probably not right now, but chapter 3. One that feared God and hated or avoided evil. Uh, and that reminds me of a couple of, in Psalm 119, there's a couple of verses that uh, talk about Therefore have I hated every evil way. It's a cause and effect relationship. If you love God, if you love his word, it's going to affect you to hate everything that's wrong. Hate, hate, hate. It's a strong word. It's a strong word. Uh, Job hated evil. Job hated evil. Uh, he was a family man, had seven sons and three daughters, uh, which some that goes into the uh, what we talked about uh, being the potentially an allegory because at the end he winds up with the exact same amount uh, of sons and daughters. Um, but I don't think that's an issue. Uh, so, and he was wealthy. It gives all of his uh, all of his. Um, Substance is 7,000 sheep and so on and so forth. Um, and at the end, he's got double all of that. You know, so, you know, God is good all the time. And um, so out of this, we get a good overview of Job's character. He is... A solid man of God. I think here, we, do we read that he says, yeah, he was the greatest of all the men in the East. He was the greatest. Again, that lends towards Job being slightly before Abraham. Little hard pressed to call Job the greatest if Abraham's on the picture too. Might have been a battle between the two of them. <laughs> uh, you know, but it seems Abraham was not yet on the scene, or at least not in Job's understanding and likely not in the understanding of the author of the book of Job, who I believe is Job. All right. Any other comments on those first five um, verses that we read? Okay. Uh, let's read. Um, uh, that's a big stretch. Somebody want to read 6 through 10, 6 through 11, and then somebody want to read 12 through, now let's go 6 through, yeah, 6 through 12. Yeah, let's do that. So read 6 through 12 and we'll stop there. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll try. All right. Six through eleven or three six through twelve. twelve. Okay. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan <clears throat> answered the Lord, From roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. 
Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, then everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. All right. Oh, so oh, this is a bit more. Oh. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Okay. So any thoughts on those pa those verses? Anything that you pick up from there? That's when he sets them up. Oh, sure. yeah. That's, that's what I <laughs> yep. get out of it. Yep. Yeah, God up. sets Satan up at that point. Good observation. I love it. <laughs> yeah. you, you wonder how much, how often God does that, even to this day. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, we'll get there. Uh, part of me, well, let, let's, let's, well, let me get there. Uh, any other, before I go, any other thoughts on that? This section, uh, we'll look at it kind of verse by verse. Now, is this the first place uh, that God and Satan are talking to each other in the Bible? Uh, by book written, I would say yes, since I believe Job is the first book written. By uh, chronology of events, I would say no, because they spoke in the garden. Right. Uh, right, yeah, right. You know, God spoke to Satan in the Garden of Eden. So it depends on which way you want to look at it. Uh, but by books written, I would say yes. <clears throat> All right, so let's get into it here. Uh, <clears throat> verse 6, Now there was a day when the sons of God came and presented themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Um, the sons of God reference here is referring to angels. Um, in the Old Testament, the sons of God is often a reference to angels. But we should take note, there's a differentiation here between the sons of God and Satan. Satan's not one of the sons of God. It says, God, uh, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. So the angels came to present themselves and Satan came along with them. So if all angels fallen and not fallen were considered sons of God, there would have been no need to make special differentiation about Satan having come yeah, with they, them. They'd all be sons of God. They'd all be sons of God. I really That's don't... That's a good point, Bob. That's yeah. a real good point. I really don't think God considers the demons and devils that rebelled against him to be his sons. And there would be no reason to make that differentiation. If the that son, is, man, I'm sorry, that's just to for the differentiation to say that Satan came with the sons of God. Yeah. That's an, that's a great point for differentiation. Yeah, and I mean and there's elsewhere which we're not going to get into, but elsewhere in the Bible that I think this understanding can also lend more Mm -hmm. credibility to interpreting other passages of Scripture. Um, and God asks Satan right off the bat, yep. where have you come from? Yep. As, as if, what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the very, yeah, in the very next verse, the Lord said to Satan, where do you come from? Where, from where do you come? Where, whence comest thou? Where are you coming from? Uh, and then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. So I find interesting stuff as I read. Satan came into the presence of the Lord with the sons of God, the angels. He didn't open his mouth until God asked him a question. And you can bet, I'm just, I'm, I'm just doing a Bob paraphrase right now. You can bet that that conversation went like this. Where did you come from? Oh, I've been wandering around the earth looking to and fro. I mean, Satan jumped and answered. You can bet he didn't stand and hem and haw and twiddle his thumbs. If God commands Satan, he jumps. Okay. 
Settle down, Bob. Yeah, he, yeah, he didn't say it was none of your business. <laughs> yeah, he didn't say it was none of your business. What, what do you care? <laughs> What's it to you? Uh, yeah, exactly. And I actually, I actually expect that Satan was expected to come by God. I don't think Satan went to God on his own accord. No, he was um, led by angels. Yeah. I think Satan, I think God fully expected Satan to show up and Satan didn't really have a choice because can you imagine God's here and Satan's over here and God does not tell him to come or expect him to come? Why in the world would Satan voluntarily come into the presence of God? I mean, he, I mean, God had Michael handle his light work. Michael, go throw him out. <laughs> You know, God didn't even dirty his own hands with him. So Satan's not going to go into the presence of God on his own volition. I don't believe. And then, um, you know, like somebody that ans answers a question is in control of the conversation. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that's, he asked, yeah. he asked them a question. And yeah. It, it's like uh, taking the presence of he's in charge. Yeah, oh, that question. absolutely. God's in charge. Absolutely. No doubt. Uh, so uh, verse eight, this is kind of I kind of almost jumped ahead. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there is no one like him in the earth, a blameless or perfect and upright man, one that fears God and eschews or hates or avoids evil? Uh Satan didn't bring up Job. He knew better. He answered, I've been going around the earth, up and down, to and fro. Satan didn't bring up Job. Satan didn't want to bring up a losing subject because he was going to lose. And I think he knew he was going to lose. Go ahead. He, um, in verse, verse 7, I guess it is, where when Satan answers the Lord, from roaming through the earth and get going back and forth in it. Like, he he is saying, I'm going, I'm looking around. Yeah. I'm looking. Oh, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. let, let me tell you what you should look for. Like, yeah. He, he, yeah. But he was looking for something. Set him up. And, right, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and so he was, <coughs> he sounds kind of frustrated as if he, he had spent a lot of time looking and he's, and he doesn't know what to find and god throws job under the bus yeah <laughs> uh, no, the first seriously. recording of someone being thrown under the bus. there you go <laughs> no seriously <laughs> satan's wandering to and fro and elsewhere in the scripture Nothing says the yeah elsewhere in the scripture says seeking who he may devour so this is what he's doing he's wandering to and fro seeking whom he can devour and satan didn't give job consideration because he knew he wasn't going to devour job come on he knew he wasn't going to get job so satan didn't want to bring job up but god did god brags about job job here let me let me show let me uh narrow down your search have you considered my servant job another bob paraphrase have you considered my servant Job? There's nobody like him in all the world. Have you thought about him? So there we go. God throws Job under the bus because he knew Job could handle it. Yeah. Uh, and so here's the question I struggle with. I would love for God to be able to brag about me like that. But I'd hate it too. <laughs> I'd love, I'd love for God to be able to say, "Hey, Satan, have you thought about my servant Bob?" I don't think God can, by the way, for those watching on Facebook. But I'd love for God to be able to say, "Satan, look at Bob. Hey, have you checked him out? Look at Bob." But I know the rest of the Book of Job, and there's a whole long stretch. I'm not interested in. <laughs> the end result I like, we'll get there. But that long stretch in between is not what I want. So God, only you know what I can handle. Mm -hmm. And I know you're not going to give me more than I can handle. Yeah. But Lord, I do want to be someone you could brag about in your time. Maybe. <laughs>
All right. So God can brag about Job. Uh, well, Satan's got an answer, you know. He's grasping at straws now. Satan, verse 9, answered the Lord and says, well, Job, does, Job fears God for no reason. He says, you've put a hedge of protection around him. By the way, this is where that hedge of protection comes from, uh, that we, we use it all the time, you know. Um, but you put a hedge around him. Have you, not, have you not made a hedge around him about his house and about all that he has on every side? And you've blessed the work of his hands and his substance has increased throughout the land? Put your hand now, but put forth thy hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to his face. Satan answers God. God brags about Satan, but God brags about Job. And Satan answers immediately, well, yeah, Job fears you because he's he's got it made in a shade. You know? You've blessed everything he does. He's wealthy beyond beyond measure. He's got a great family, big family, he's got all kinds of possessions, he's protected on every side. Of course he doesn't have a of course he's he's godly. Well, for those of you considering how many wealthy people do we know that's blessed beyond measure that aren't very godly? All right? All right? Just because you got it, even if you got it and you call yourself a Christian, doesn't necessarily make you like Job. Okay? But Satan's grasping at straws. He wanted to avoid the subject of Job. He didn't want to bring that subject up. Uh, but, you know, hey, uh, God threw Job under the bus because he knew Job was going to be able to handle it, and he knew Job was going to come out better, which we see in the end. Um, <clears throat> I should just give a general spoiler alert. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just going to happen, folks. Uh, so, uh, so he says, but now Satan, Satan knows Who's in control? What does Satan say? Verse 11, he says, but put forth your hand now. Satan doesn't say, let me go after him. He knows God's in control. Put forth your hand now, and he'll curse you to his, your face. Now, God used Satan. We see that in the next verse. But Satan didn't presume to say, let me at him. He didn't presume to say, let me at him. He said, God, you put your hand forth against him. And we're going to see what Job says, which is going to maybe blow some of our minds uh, in a minute. Hopefully. Yeah, we got time. We'll probably get there. Um, so. That's like tempting God, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. 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 But yeah. So Satan knew God's in control. You, you protect him. If you put your hand against him, he's going to curse you to your face. Satan knew. Satan knew. And the Lord said unto Satan, okay, verse 12, Behold, all that Job has is in your power. Okay, you think you know what's going on. Here you go. I put him in your hands. All that he has is in your power only upon himself do not put forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So Satan got his okay. He had his limitation. Touch anything he's got except him. Everything he's got, you got. It's in your, it's in your power. You think you know it all? Go for it. Go for it. And once he got the approval and he was dismissed, he left the presence of God. And that's where we stopped reading. So before we start reading the next section, anybody want to make further comment on that? Uh, anything else jump out or any thoughts? Just thoughts that, but he did touch him, didn't he? Because he got boils. And oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whoa, you're not allowed 
allowed to. You uh, didn't put forth the spoiler alert, but yeah. I did. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get there. That's that's the second temptation that okay. Satan Satan asks a second time. He's <laughs> and we'll get there. Uh, but Satan does, you know, because Job doesn't curse God, and Satan says, "Well, yeah, you didn't let me touch him." And then he does put boils, and we're going to talk about those. I got some thoughts on that. Um, well, um, God shows that he's in control again because he put Job in his hand. Yep. And oh, with yeah. the limitations. With the limitations. Right. Yep. All right. So unless we got anything else, who wants to read verses 13 through? Uh, 20. Anybody? I can. Okay. Just let me swallow. <laughs> Go there was it. a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep, and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to, to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The, the Chaldeans made out, three, made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Okay. <laughs> gotta love, gotta love Job. <laughs> gotta love Job. Yeah, not me. So, uh, anyone want to make commentary on that section? Well, Satan went. He did fast work. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he moved quick. He yep. Was. Yep. And it wasn't because God told him to. He's in trouble for what he did. Oh, yeah. But he, he he was very eager to to do this. Yep. So, he's a jerk. Yeah. yeah. Satan moved fast and he's a jerk so far we got out of this section. <laughs> uh, well, um, <laughs> theological here. Yeah. The bad stuff happened to Job and the first thing he did was worship. That blows my mind. Yeah. This is why God brags about Job. Right. And the other thing about, you know, with Satan, though, too, is he wants to kill and destroy. Yep. And that's what he did. Yep. What he wants to do. Yes. Yep. And that just fulfills the scripture where he says he, he has come to kill and destroy. Yeah. But yep. with abandon. He doesn't care. He just, no, he's just no, so full of hatred yes. and, and, and just, just deceit and disgustingness that <clears throat> he just wanted to kill everything yeah. or yeah. wipe it out. Absolutely, absolutely. And and he he does it because he believes that that if it's bad enough, people will turn against God. They uh -huh. will doubt and they will not believe. But praise God for well God's salvation that there are people who will completely turn to God and they will not disown. Their faith. Yeah. So part of part of the purpose of the book of Job is um, how we deal with difficult times. Uh, basically, you got two choices: run away from God or run to Him. Amen. I mean, that's your choice. You know, um, neutrality is really not an option. You're going to run to God or you're going to run away from Him, and. Uh, God's, I, I can't imagine 
not wanting to go to God. But Satan, we're talking about here, he is very good at getting people to blame God. Yes, he is. Now, God's in absolute control. And we see this in throughout this section, too. Um, but God lets Satan have a certain amount of free reign. So when you're thinking about that as you read through Job, and, and we'll kind of, spoiler alert, jump ahead to the boils as well. But um, this is Satan we're talking about. And he is going to do the absolute worst that he can think of within his limitations. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the boils, uh, I don't know what they are. I don't think anybody knows specifically what they are. There's a lot of things that they, that they could be. What I do know is that within Satan's mind at that time, boils had to have been the very worst thing he could think of. Because that was the, he couldn't that kill him. That won't kill him. Yeah, that won't kill him. That won't kill him. Good point. Because he was not allowed to kill him. But whatever he wanted to do, boils had to have been the very worst thing that would not kill Job. Uh, and so this stuff that we're talking about now are the very worst things that Satan could think of um, that didn't touch Job, which was his current limitation. Um, so here... Messenger comes to Job, the oxen are plowing, and the Sabaeans came and uh, took him away and slain the servants of, uh, slain Job's servants. Uh, so there goes his oxen. Um, and at, at that time, your possessions was generally your money. I mean, they did have gold and silver and such, but for the most part, wealth was measured by possessions. Um, and while he was still speaking, there came another and said, the fire of God is fallen. He didn't say the fire of Satan has fallen. The fire of God is fallen. Uh, I love this because, yes, Satan's doing it, but throughout Job, they seem to acknowledge God is the authority. God is the authority. He doesn't get the blame but he's in absolute and total control. Um, the fire of God is fallen from heaven and has burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I'm the only one escaped. So, sheep and servants, boom, dead. All right. While he was still talking, so to Aldina's point, Satan's moving quick. These guys are coming with the reports. One hasn't finished talking. The next one's coming. Uh, while he was still talking, uh, <clears throat> there came another and said the Chaldeans um, Sorry. <clears throat> made out three bands and fell upon the camels, and they have carried them away and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I'm the only one that escaped. So now you got the Chaldeans coming. Uh, and um, killing the camels. And while he was still speaking, another one said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell <laughs> upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only uh, escaped to tell you. So... Here's Satan's almost piece de resistance. He kills all of Job's children in one fell swoop. They're all, I find it somewhat interesting, um, they're all in the oldest brother's house. Uh, <clears throat> and they were eating and drinking wine. I just find that interesting, you know, it sounds like they were partying again, um, you know. They could have just left it at eating and drinking. I mean, you know, we're gathered around the table here eating and drinking, but it's water or pop, uh, you know. So, it just, I find it interesting. I'm not going to make any doctrine out of it. 
Uh, I'm, but, you know, earlier on, Job was continually, continually offering sacrifice to sanctify his kids lest they should sin. Uh, sounds like maybe they were having one of those parties. I don't know. All I do know is the house fell on them and they were all dead. Dead, dead. Now, that's the first killing this, of Satan, right? That Satan yeah. killed some of his humans, right? Uh, well, no, the servants were killed in the previous verses. Some of the servants along with some of the, uh, the, the uh, cattle and sheep and that. Uh, I alone escaped. So there were servants tending to those flocks. Right. But one of them escaped to tell Job because each one says, I alone escaped to tell you. So, um, so other people were killed in the process of this. But this is the one that really would have gotten Job. All of his sons and daughters were killed. Because um, he was a family man. Yeah, because he was a family man. And you think about it, Bob, I'm not trying to interrupt. Oh, go ahead. But you think about it, though, and, and we as human beings as well. It's like all the time, you know, sacrifices for them, you know, the burnt offerings for... For the children, because like basically, God, I've done everything I know to do to take care of them and to to take care of their sin. I know they're not perfect kids, but what did I do all of this for? Yeah, could have been thoughts that he was having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And good point. And someone on Facebook just mentions it reminded them of the eating and drinking that will be before the second coming. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's a, another thought. Uh, Boom. Great point. Yeah. So, um, excellent point. Uh, so, they took Job's entire family except his wife. His wife was fair game. Satan could have taken her. God only prevented him from taking Job, possibly, um, because the two shall become one flesh. Maybe she was covered under that. But when we look a little further, I think there's another reason that his wife was left. The nag. Uh, the nag. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was. Make him even more she was. Miserable. Yeah, make him more I miserable. The boils. I can't sit down. And everything okay, hurts. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm oozing. I smell. And you're nagging. Yeah, yeah. And so you know, uh, I, I think I heard a, a comedian say something like a Christian comedian. I think I heard someone say something like, "Well, Satan, Job's wife is over there," and Satan says, "I know." <laughs> you know, so we'll look at that yeah. in the context of the scripture in a minute here. Uh, you know, Ex yeah, ex exactly. exactly. Oh boy, so, someone on Facebook just laughed at that. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, maybe we won't get to chapter two, but uh, but this is all good. This is all good. So, no, the thing too, about when you said, and what did he do? He worshiped God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of these things that he did for his kids. Yeah. All of it. You just, all the sacrifices, all of this. We try to raise our kids the right way. We show them the goodness of God. And they still rebel and still do these things. But what does he do? He worships God. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had people say to me several times, well, you prayed for that person and they died. Or you prayed for that person to be healed. They're still not healed. Or you prayed for a financial miracle for these people and they don't have it. So why do you keep doing it? I said, do I have any other choice? Exactly. So like when Bob said, you know, well, what are you going to do? You can choose to worship God or not. Yeah. So I don't stop praying. I'm not going to give up. It's like, right. So what else? Well, is, there, is there something better to do? No. Because eventually your prayer will be answered. One way or another. One yeah. way or another. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and if, if the Bible says that if we give... A, a glass or a cup of water to a little child, and he will reward that. He will definitely reward all the prayers and all the all the effort that we have put into our children, children. Yeah. or into other situations. Mm -hmm. And 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 God is keeping record mm. of all those things, and and He will sur surely uh, um, recognize the merits. Of us, not because we are good, but he he keeps a tally. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and that's 
Christ in us. You know, every time that we get out of the way and let Christ live through us, how can we fail? The only failure is every time I do it. Every time I do it. I'm, but why I, do we still do it? <laughs> the flesh doesn't want to die. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally convinced 100%, 100% of the time that I glorify God, it's not I, but Christ. Amen. 100% of the time I don't glorify God, it's That's not me. Christ, but I. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it's just like a choice of eating healthy or unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah, if you do harm to yourself because you're eating unhealthy, it's not it's not the diet, it's you. Okay. You know, because you chose the wrong thing. Because I ate three pieces of pizza right now. I didn't th so you why, threw yourself you threw yourself so under the bus. Saying that right now? <laughs> so. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So. I, I would, I would, I would, if, if you want to if you want to reference it to food, you can look at it like Satan is like the greasy hamburger and fries as opposed to God being the more like vegetables and the good stuff. There you go. There you go. So and he, he's got he's got a wonderful feast waiting for us. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. 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 At the banquet at the feast banquet. at the banquet feast. Everything's gonna Everything. taste like chocolate cake, which I can't eat anymore. Anyhow, uh, we're off. We're off Job at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> verse twenty. Then, then Job arose and tore his clothes, shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. What a response, man! What a response. The, and that's what set apart these holy men of God. Yeah. In those in those early ancient days, because they they really they um they knew what to do. <laughs> they knew what to do, and they knew, knew to worship. And think about it, they knew what to do, and had little to no scripture to teach mm -hmm. them. If Job if Job is the first book written, he had no scripture. That's right. You know, uh, and so these people had this. Inter this personal relationship. I'm not going to say like Adam in the garden where they walked with God in the cool of the day, uh, because that kind of ended at the fall. But they still they 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 Job continually sacrificed for his kids. Job was con he feared God and the hunger and that hunger for God. So yeah, these guys they had this intimacy, which Shame on us. We have greater access to God. We have boldness to come into the throne of grace and mercy uh, boldly, boldly, anytime we want. Anytime we want. The, the, in, the, in the Holy of Holies, the high priest went once a year with fear and trembling, and tradition says they tied a rope around his leg in case he dropped down dead. So they could pull them out. So they could pull them out without going in and dropping down dead themselves. Right. Uh, you know, we've got this access into the holy of holies, and we seem to not know God as well as Job. You know, uh, I'm talking to me too. I'm talking to me. I'm not talking at anybody. This is why I love the Bible because it's so encouraging. I, I'm not. I'm not discouraged. By my lack, I'm encouraged by God's ability. Amen. You know? Yeah. So I acknowledge where I fall short, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't live there. A righteous man falls seven times, he gets up again. Uh, by the way, you're not limited to seven. <laughs> Seven. I'm seven. done. I'm done, yeah. Numer numer numerologically, seven's the number of completion, and eight's the number of new beginnings. So, uh, anyhow, we're moving on here. Uh, Job fell down to the... we got two more verses in this mm -hmm. chapter, and then we'll wrap it up, and we'll get to chapter two next week. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, Job fell down to the ground and worshipped. That's unbelievable to me. You know, I seriously doubt if one of my sons died, especially in a way like this. I seriously doubt my first response 
would be to fall to the ground and worship. I don't think I could do it. Praise God, he knows what I could handle. I would grumble and complain first and fall. Yeah, I think I'd be taking Job's wife's advice. We're jumping ahead. (laughs) Um, So let's finish this chapter because this is so awesome. This is so awesome. Uh, What Job says. Verse 21. He fell, uh, verse 20, he fell down and worshiped. Verse 21, and Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then verse 22. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. We got to get this right, people. God's in control. God is in control. Job says, I came out naked. I'm going in, going back naked. Unless the funeral director yeah, puts some not, clothes on. Because it's not about me. Everything I have is from God, yeah. so it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever I had, whatever God took, I didn't have it I when it I came. I got it from him anyway. Yeah, I didn't have it when I came. I got it from him anyway. I'm not going to take it with me. Yeah. And his ways are higher than our ways. Yep. Mm-hmm. Amen. His, and so he does everything in such a way. We, we just can't yeah. automatically understand what he's doing. But we can ask him to help us to see things the way he wants us to. And so we can... And I think that's a big thing about, especially mm-hmm. when the devil's involved, you've got to <coughs> understand how he works. And, um, but yeah, he, but, but Job did not charge God. That's the next point. Yeah. Job didn't charge God foolishly. Yeah. Job didn't say, the Lord gave and Satan took away. Right. No. He didn't say that. Mm-hmm. And God's in control. Is it maybe because in those days especially, it still applies now, but they recognize that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. They would repeat that many times yeah. in their in their different quotes, and 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 so Satan he knew that he had not created anything out of nothing. Yeah, and he could not take any credit. He could any, and, he, of that. and so, he couldn't take anything away without God's approval. Right. Yeah. So the Lord gave. And the Lord took away. For anybody who's old enough to remember Flip Wilson, the devil didn't make you do it. That's right. You know. That uh, devil's mean old devil. Charles <laughs> Jones. Yeah, it was an old TV the show. Devil, and Flip Wilson would, he would always do something that and say, devil, the devil the made me devil do it. The devil made me do it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's so, uh, but the devil didn't make him do it. The Lord's in control. Amen. And throughout the book of Job, we see the acknowledgement of God's sovereignty. So uh, we don't want to foolishly blame God, but we don't want to take away his that, ultimate authority. That, that so Holy Ghost that the Holy Ghost was speaking to Job at that point. It had to be because mm-hmm. cause what, what he is also, you, you can tie that right to where like with Jesus, they they couldn't take his life. Yep. Only he can give it up. There's no way they could take his life. Yep. Yet Job had the understanding. There's no way Satan could take that from me. It had to be God. Yep. And spoiler alert. Uh, nowhere. I love this. During the book of Job, we're gonna see Job wished he'd never been born. Yeah. Nowhere does Job ever contemplate taking his own life. Suicide is not an issue, is not an, even an option for Job. Uh, so a little spoiler alert, I forget which chapter it's in, but we'll, we'll be talking a little bit about that. Job definitely wishes he hadn't been born, but he never considers taking his own life. So I uh, also want, and we'll end with prayer, just want to say uh, one person on Facebook mentioned that when she lost her oldest son, uh, she wasn't mad, just devastated. Yeah. Yes. And so praise God, His grace is sufficient. 
Amen. His grace is sufficient for us. Uh, unless you've gone through it, you don't know. I mean, the only thing I do know is when and if I face that, I know God's grace will be sufficient he for will. me. When my that I know. Died, when my granddaughter died, he gave me the grace to just... Yeah. I'm still trusting you. Yeah. No matter what. Amen. And then so, the last line that says, charging God is foolishly. Yeah. It's foolish. Yeah. You're a fool if you do that. Yeah, well, that's the way to look at it. Yeah. Basically, it's saying what Job said was not a wrong accusation against God. But yeah, you'd be a fool to... Take charge God, blame God. Yeah. Yeah. Only people But he gives school. you the grace. Yeah. You don't understand those things, but you just accept it. That <clears throat> so. Um, because even with the challenges that I'm experiencing right now, and I'm thinking, whoa, what, what's happened to my life? But the thing is, and, and so here I was all excited mm -hmm. about reading God's word and all of his promises and all of the answers there. And I thought, you know what, I get the feeling that I might go through a trial for a while and then everything's going to start turning around and it's going to be okay. But I, but now I understand, I don't have that guarantee, but God's grace is, is going to be there it to... Is carry me through yes. and to help me to endure and and yes. so I had to I had to I, I said Lord help me to see things the way you want me to because I don't want to be like I do have hope in the Lord because God's word is full of hope but but I need to have a re renewed mind so that I'm thinking along his line and I see throughout the scriptures also that those promises they're there but there is this aspect of grace from God that right. I have to keep in mind. And so it's like, oh, Lord, that that means that mm -hmm. you may allow me to go longer than I thought, or maybe it won't really turn out the way I am hoping, but um, but God will be there. Amen. 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 When, I, when I got the, <clears throat> the, the, the phone call with my granddaughter, at that point, she was still alive. She had mm. found herself. Mm. Oh, but as I drove to their home, I said, Lord, no matter what, mm. no matter what happens, I'm still going to trust you. And he, he gave me the grace. Wow. I couldn't have done that. And it's seven years, and I wow. still, I'm praising mm. him and thanking him because wow. it wasn't, I had nothing to do with being able to deal with it. And to this day, I never, I never even was angry with him because he yeah. gave me the grace yeah. to get through it. And he also gave me the chances, many, many, many chances to help other people. Because Amen. the Lord has brought Amen. people Amen. in my path in the that have experienced that. And I can give them a word of encouragement. Sure. And the, you, as I said many times, you can't fake it. You can't yeah. buy it. Yeah, yeah. I have the joy of the Lord and I have the peace that passes understanding. Amen. You can't manufacture it. Yeah. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, I'm seeing the same thing on Facebook. Uh, I wasn't mad, just devastated. Yes. Not being angry had to be God. Oh, and the enemy took my son, and even though God allowed it, I never blamed him, and he gets the glory for Amen. that. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. I mean, 14 All right. years old, you bury a 14-year-old oh. daughter. Yeah, yeah. All right, so being sensitive to the time, we don't want to go too far over. We got a little little over, but uh, uh, being sensitive to the time, we'll close with prayer, and next week we'll uh, start Chapter 2, which is another super powerful chapter, and uh, we'll go forward from there. Lord, we thank you for the ministry you're doing now through this book of Job. Yes. We thank you for testimonies uh, that have come out here in the building and on Thank Facebook, you. Lord, of how you have been faithful in, in similar situations. Lord, every situation is different, but your faithfulness is great and always there. So, Lord, uh, thank you for Job. Thank you for the encouragement that we have and can have in him and the book and, and throughout your scriptures. Give us ears to hear. Yes. 
and help us to uh, grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks for joining us, those on Facebook, and God bless, and we're planning for next week, Lord willing.